like to call the bad. He likes to call it the ugly. That's correct. So we have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. There you go. Hi, I'm Dave, owner of Future Pass Vintage Collectibles, here with my daughter, Rachel. Hello. Like we are every week. Yes, we're here. Talking about comic books. Big surprise. <laughs> Let's talk about them. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Today, we're talking about comic books. Yes. Why don't, if you don't mind, I picked up some books for my PC, and sometimes I just would be going through the books I have and realize that it's a PC book once I grade it. So anyway, I want to just show some books that I'm probably one of the only people interested in. Anyway. Yep. Here's the first one. It's Our Army at War, number 140. I just bought this. Um, got a really good price. Very nice grade on this. Anytime I can get these um, in higher than 7.0, I grab them. Very, very hard to find. This is a really nice copy. I got a, I got a few of those. Here's 128. Yes, yeah, just such a nice copy. Star Spangled War Stories 122 and 114. So we had a couple of these, um, and, and I got what I thought was a pretty fair price on these. I picked them up. Uh, really nice copies. I, the, the Star Spangled War Stories run of dinosaur covers, I think, started in number 90, 89 or 90, and it went for like 60 issues. Mm -hmm. So they all have dinosaur covers. I would like them all. Okay. <laughs> for, especially the first one. And I, I picked up some, I, I pick up stuff that I sell. I sell stuff exactly like this. But I'm a sucker for it. If I think something's a 9.6 or a 9.8, I, I kind of have to have it. I've already <laughs> sold a 9.8 of this once. But uh, yeah, stalker number one. You probably don't care about that book. But look, really high grade books uh, from these small series in DC are like my kryptonite. I, I have to own every one of them. This is Weird Western Tales. <laughs> yeah. So these aren't books I'd even be interested in in 9.2. I mean, but when you're super high grade like this, and they're probably 9.6s, and there's probably some 9.8 candidates, um, I would have taken, if he had every issue, I'd have taken them. I'm going to show these two by themselves because yeah. they're just so cool. These are both great covers. Um, Scary. Yep. <laughs> a very EC-like. Um, fantastic covers, so I'm all about it. Here's some Star Hunters. Yeah. Little books I pick up just because of the grade, you know? And uh, I'll just put these on my PC. I have the strangest PC. You really do? It's different. <laughs> I'm eclectic. Yeah. We actually tried to sell this in the claim sale. And you said, I'll just keep it. I didn't try that hard. So No, you didn't. <laughs> and I priced this at, I think, two seventy five. It's a 9.2. After the claim sale, and we, and we sold almost everything. Mm -hmm. You were like, upset that you didn't sell this. Yeah, <laughs> this goes back in my PC. It, it kind of convinced me because... Regardless of what someone else thinks it's worth, I'm not selling it for less than that, and it would have hurt my feelings to even sell it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of... took it away. I had a ton of these teen humors, and I really do like them, but I ended up selling them all, and I bought some other stuff when I decided to do this for a living. Wish I'd have kept them. Anyway, um, we have some books, too, that we're just starting to put together. I'm going to grab a handful, and you can grab a handful. Oh, sure. So uh, we do clean sales every single Monday from 5 to 7 yeah. p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time over on Instagram. Um, they're a lot of fun. They're two hours of nonstop... Silver, bronze, and copper books like these. I love the picture box. High grade, super high grade stuff. Some of these we showed in a previous video from when we got them from the collection that we bought them from. Um, we're gonna be selling these, which I'm excited about. We showed these the other day. And got some good stuff coming for you guys if you wanna check them out. First parents of the new Teen Titans. Mm -hmm. I think this one's in 9 0. Yeah. Yep. Um, and this is, a, this is near Mint Mint. And it comes with the poster. Cool. Some more Hulks. I love these older Hulk covers. They're really cool. And, and this is just like, I literally just grabbed a handful. These aren't even the biggest keys or, you know, uh, one of these new stand ones not. They're both, I think, in, in the ones in near mint. One's a... Uh, I can't. Near mint minus. Near mint minus. <laughs> it's like yeah. I can't see it. Ooh, what a different I, I, I handful. Think, I, I think this is a very good, um, but it's a nice copy. I mean... Yeah. Cool. And this one. Great Lantern. Yeah, that's a near mint mint. Mm -hmm. Just pristine. Anyway, nice. uh, that's just a sample of stuff that, that we sell in our live claim sale. We have a lot of fun yeah. over there. Go check us out. We're linked down below if you want to hang out with us over there. You know, I've been selling comic books in auction for a long time. been buying comic books in auction for a long time. But I'll tell you, since uh, 2021, things have changed so much 
that uh, I think I'm done with that at this point. I, I'm not even sending books to CGC. I find it, it's much better to sell them on my claim sale. People like getting the value because I don't have to charge as much. I know what I have in a book. So they're always buying under market that way. And, and if it's a 9.6 or an Air Mint Mint or a 9.4 of, of a key that uh, would normally cost more, I can see why someone would buy a raw. And I've been seeing a ton of that. We've been selling out. I mean, mm -hmm. and we bring hundreds of books. So that's our, our focus is really high grade. And uh, there was a period of time that I got some, I did some slabbing that the books were coming back at 9.4 and it's when they changed graders and all that. I've cracked some of those and, and improved the books, but I still had a slew of them. So I sent a ton of books. I, I tried to get a certain dollar amount. It was like almost 200 books, right, that you sent? 186 books I sent in. Um, and then they sent me a check for half of what GPA was. And then it took them months, five months, to sell them. And I think it was a glitch of some kind, but they didn't even put them up. So some of them had gone down. So long story short, yeah, it, it was not a successful auction <laughs> on, on those terms. I mean, uh, uh, on the other side, I did buy a lot of books, um, but that kind of got me buried. So I, I had expected, because I've done this a lot. Yeah. I've, I've done that exact same thing uh, multiple times and done well. I've done times where I made more than GPA. Not this the time. highest ever yeah. sold we, on certain books. It was close to like, a, so we got like a 60% of GPA and then I had to pay them 10%. So I got like half of what I expected. Let's show you some so you kind of get an idea. <laughs> and uh, that's why I only do claim sales now. Um, because some of these books, and I'll talk to you about it, the market's changed a lot and we've learned a couple things. So we're going to kind of focus on that. So why yeah. don't you show like the first book? Yeah. So this first little slew of books are books that we made what we had kind of expected or what GPA was showing that we should make for it. Uh, the first one is Fantastic Four 292. It was a 98 white pages. Uh, the GPA on this book was $140. It had sold in January of 2023 for $140. Um, and we sold it. For $140. Yeah, it sold for $140. Then I got to pay the 10% and all mm -hmm. that. So um, it, these John Byrne covers are great. Uh, I, I'm a little trepidatious on these right now because I really do think slabs of common books that aren't major keys. At any time, the market can get glutted with them. Yeah. So, you know, you'd expect sometimes to make more on these, but if you're trying to gauge anything off 2021, it's not like that anymore. Yeah, well, and I know? didn't even pull the census data because there's so many 9.8s, it didn't make sense. And there's, I, and there's, I, there's not a lot, to tell you the truth. Th this one's not thousands. Um, it's no, it's hundreds. It's probably 100 or yeah. 150, but the fact is that I have another copy of that right now that's probably a 9.8 that's raw. Yeah. And we'll probably just sell that raw. I'd rather sell the raw copy for 90 bucks than sell that for 140. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what was the next book? Um, the next one is Fantastic Four 257. It's a CGC 9.8 as well. White Pages. It's the um, Scarlet Witch and Galactus appearance. Another John Byrne cover. Um, this one, in May, it sold for $209, but the 90-day average was $140. Yeah. So this is one that is a little weird because we sold it for 143 so it's close to the 90-day average. But it did just recently sell. Well, what's interesting is, you know, I looked at this stuff a year ago, too, mm -hmm. when it was getting those higher prices. And that's why I have a lot of Fantastic Four. In, in this, in volume one, I probably have a thousand copies of different ones. Just started selling them on our claim sale. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them sells. Yeah. Especially between 100 and 200. But I wouldn't be surprised if this book goes under 100. I, just, just because of the trend I'm seeing. Yeah. Not a lot slab there's 223 of them slab 99 of them are nine eights so like there's a lot of nine eights out there for it, how many there are that yeah are i'd call that typical yeah. for what you'd expect from that yep uh, so the next book is web of spider-man number 90 it's a cgc 98 it has a mysterio appearance and it has the um spider-man 2099 poster holographic cover um yeah. gpa on this book was a hundred dollars we sold it for 110 dollars it's a commodity book. I mean, there's a lot of them out there. And mm -hmm. the thing about this particular book is you'd be very hard pressed, not impossible, but hard pressed to find a copy raw in 9.8 that's been sitting in a collection um, because I, I have about 10 of these, I think. Not one of them doesn't have some massive spine tick. Yeah. Because, because the book is so thick. thick. Cardboard cover. There's a lot of pages in this book and then it's mm -hmm. got a cardboard cover on top of it. So yeah, yeah that was fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so the next one and the last one on the 
ones that we hit right on the money is Amazing Spider-Man 300. It was a 9-2 White Pages newsstand. Yeah. Um, if you know, you know. GPA on newsstand was $665 90-day average. We sold ours for $675. Yeah. What's interesting to me about this book is the highest recorded sale is $1,500 for a 9-2 newsstand. Right. Um, which, I mean, everyone knows that this book is hot all the time. But yeah. the price definitely fluctuates. <laughs> that, that was the uh, 2021 interruption of comic books. So, um, it's like this money, this book's always going to make money, but who knows how much money. <laughs> so this next part, I like to call the bad. He likes to call it the ugly. That's correct. So we have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. There you go. And away we go. <laughs> Show us. Not any money. Just show uh, us something. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to start off with Avengers number eight. It was a CGC 5.5. It's a creamed off-white copy. Um, and this is the first appearance of King the Conqueror. So if you know, you know. Another well, key. Well, and before you even get into the money, just so you know, this came back exactly what I expected. Like the grade? Yeah. It, yeah. Was, it, was, it, was, it was a pretty tough, it was in tough shape. Yeah. Page quality, everything exactly like I expected. Challenge here was when I sent it in, the book was going up again. This type of book in this grade, every grade ha is like its own channel, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, it's just volatile. So I, this didn't upset me that much. I mean, what would have upset me is if it got, go ahead and say what I got. 90 day average was $808 and the last one sold for $850. Um, the $850 sale was an off-white white white copy. Um, we sold this book in auction for seven hundred and eight dollars. And I think that's probably ten, twelve percent under what I would expect fair market value to be. But that's a guess. You're guessing. I mean, what that next person's willing to spend on a book is what fair market value is. Well, that's the I mean, money you... it sold for eight fifty. So. You don't put Pat. <laughs> so that was what it sold for. Yeah, but that was in that place in that time with that buyer and that buyer's money. Right. So when you're in a place and and you can get a book cheaper, you do. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't as many people running and gunning. Now, I don't know if the 850 was also creamed off. No, I said it was off white, white. Yeah, that makes it all the difference. Very different. In the world. Well, and the highest recorded sale of this book was in 5.5 is 2,500. And that could have been a white page. So, off white to white. Doubt it. If I was going to look at that and come up with the value, off white to white to me um, would be a 10 to 15% premium. Mm -hmm. And white pages could be a 20 to yeah. 25% premium, depending on what book it is and what kind of key. Page quality is everything. I, this is when page quality matters because, yeah. it you know, it, it, would I expect to pay 20% more for an off-white or a white copy, off-white to white, rather than a cream to off-white? Yeah. Well, cream to off-white, is you're starting to get into danger zone. I looked at the last five sales recorded and none of them were a cream to off-white. All of them were better page so, quality. So I that. win. <laughs> and that's I why... Win. Well, I mean, you just were the one that... Sold it. That's I'm not here to offer cheaper books. That's probably what it should have gotten then, as a cream off white copy. I think it's right on the money. Yeah, so I do. Yeah. it's bad in the sense of like percentage versus what has already sold, but it's also cream off white. It's fine. That's why it's I, the yeah. first one we're talking about. It's in the bad. fine because there's worse. Number two. <laughs> so next up on this list is Fantastic Four 254. It was a CGC 98 off white white pages. Um, GPA for this book was a hundred and one dollars. Mm -hmm. Um, it last sold for 120, mm -hmm. 119, and we sold it for forty one dollars. Yeah, that that's just kind of like a score for someone picking yeah. it up. Um, it's fine. I, I'll we at tell least you, got slab costs back. For yeah, that I broke even on that book, maybe something like that. Yeah. But but it's uh, a lot of effort and a lot of work for nothing. You Which know? you wouldn't have sold it to break today. even. Anyone who sells comic books for a living to break even doesn't do it for long. So. And you have to make a profit or else it doesn't make sense and you can't get more books and all of that. So yeah. I, that that's not as disappointing as some other ones um, because if you want to know how to find the bottom, let me show you. <laughs> Here's next. Yeah. All right. So the next one is Star Wars 86, a CGC 92 white pages. Um, this has uh, the Governor Weasel appearance. And yeah, so GPA on this book. It sold... For $43 in July of 2022, a 9-4 sold in January for $40. We made $12. So at these types of books are not good to sell on Comic Link. No. And, and, and there's a lot of that coming. We're not going to bore you guys with a lot of details. 
But here's what's interesting. If I didn't slab that, I'd probably sell that book raw for 10. Yep. Um, I would have saved a lot of money. Because remember, I got to still pay 10%. Right. Besides getting it, you know. Uh, it's brutal. Getting it slabbed and all the shipping. I had to get the shipping from CGC, then back to Comic Link. Mm-hmm. And once I picked it. So there's so much expense built into a book like that, that those mistakes that I had sent in, they were, and we had an accumulation hundreds and hundreds of slabs Mm -hmm. so i just grabbed the ones that didn't seem like they would uh um bring a lot of attention and and, you know these things are hard to price but here this is the price this is it this is what someone paid for it yeah i mean that's kind of like you know because it used to be uh i was worried about putting them on ebay um auction for this reason that i didn't think enough eyeballs would be on it and uh, there's a lot of people looking at these auctions and still people aren't interested in buying them. So there's a lesson to be learned. Mm-hmm. We made a mistake on a, on a group of books and it was really just process stuff. Well, I'm yeah. sure someone's really happy that they bought that for $12. I, I would have... feel really good about it. You know what's funny? I would not have bought that for $12 unless I was going to press it. Um, <laughs> and somebody's probably going to press that and, pro- and probably improve it. Mm-hmm. I mean... Or it's for their PC. <laughs> I, I wouldn't doubt it at all if somebody gets a 9.6 out of that. At least, you know, those people are, are, had to spend 12 Probably had to spend tax. They had to buy shipping. Yeah, they it, ended up it, spending what? It's not a twelve dollar book anymore. Costs, and then know? if you crack it and you th- plan on resubmitting it, or if it doesn't quite go your way, now you're kind of stuck too. So don't make a winner a loser, <laughs> yeah, folks. Don't make a winner a loser. <laughs> you win. <laughs> Just leave it as it is. All right. All right. Next up is Alpha Flight number two. This is a CGC 9.4, Off-White White Pages, Origin of Marina. GPA on this book, it last sold for $29. We sold it for $11. So you're seeing that pattern of these types of books, especially once you get out of 9.8 territory, they're not even getting slab costs. So if they don't have white pages too, like you're basically just out of it. Like it's just not even worth it. Yeah. That has to be why it got such a low amount. It's because it's a 9.4 and it's off-white white pages. It's because it's Alpha Flight number and two and nine four and off white white. I, I don't know if it's ever going to be worth more than that slab. That's a book you might pay that much, like for a nine six, a nine six raw, fourteen fifteen bucks. Um, believe it or not, because there's this thing I don't know if you've heard. People like to call books really high grades, and they're not. But if you really had like uh, an according to Hoyle. Near Mint Plus in your hand, mm-hmm. expect that to cost fourteen bucks. That's mm-hmm. what I'd sell it for, you know, um, and that's right. Yeah. So the nine four, I think, is an eight dollar book, mm-hmm. but it's never a twenty four dollar book anymore. No, it's a- it. Would, what kind of market would that be if it was? Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Um, okay, here's the last one in <clears throat> our list of the bad and the ugly. So this is Silver Surfer, Volume Three, Number Four, Nine Four, White Pages. It's The Origin of Mantis. GPA on this book was $37. We sold it for $6. That's fine. I mean, it, you know what? A near mint copy uh, of this book, would it cost six bucks? Probably raw. Six to eight bucks. And this, I, well, well, there was a huge misfire. They shouldn't have been sent in. They're too low grade. I yeah. have every co- I have every issue of this now, and I have multiples. Mm-hmm. I have much nicer ones than that, and I'm not selling them. I like them. I personally like them, and I'll sell them later. Um, Silver Surfer has a show coming out. Maybe people will be more interested. I know you really like Silver Surfer. Well, I like Mantis. So I and mean, Mantis, yeah. Man- Mantis is awesome, and this is an origin. But the fact is, nine four is just not. Uh, I-, I don't think it's like this, Rachel. If you get somebody a five dollar gift. And put it in a thirty dollar box. You did not get them a thirty five dollar gift. <laughs> you got it's them a five dollar gift. Still a five dollar gift, and that's exactly what this is. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it was slabbed uh, eight times. It's only worth what it's worth. So yeah. you know, some people they get that great assurance on a nine four. How hard is it to find a nine four? So I'm not upset. I mean, I'm not mad. It's just uh, <laughs> part of me was relieved I got rid of this stuff. Because I literally would have just rather not sold them slab. There's a stigma that goes with it. And then you're just kind of, I don't want to sell slab for six bucks. Yeah. I, it hurts. I don't want to do that. Not if I paid more. And I did, you know. Yeah. So I mean, there, I mean, I guess this guy paid six bucks. I just but... I just pulled the Band-Aid, man. Here, you do it. And I'll just read the report. <laughs> yeah. um, so this last one, it's House of Mystery, number 287, CGC 98. 
It's a Kaluta cover. We were just talking, you were kind of expecting about $100 for this one. If you look at GPA and the census, there's really not a lot of information. Um, the last recorded sale of this book was in 2015, and it was a 9-2 um, for $15, which seems wrong to me. That's right. Um, no, the, it's, it's really been the last five years. So, like, you'll start seeing, even three or four years ago, you see some of these that were still very cheap. Because mm -hmm, um, people didn't care enough about them yet. Know this, that, that, like, Golden Age Horror, Good Girl Comics, Romance Stuff, they all happened to, kind of overnight that took 20 years. Mm -hmm. It's like you get these collectors and, and they get very good taste for it. And all of a sudden people are starting to realize, wow, I really do like that art. And I like, you know, I like that whole theme. I, I like that, the culture behind that, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden books will become popular. Like war books have become less popular over time because war is less of a popular topic. And the medium of comic books was an easy way to get those types of stories out ever since Captain America going all the way up into this early 70s. They still had war comics, but mm -hmm. they're kind of like a non-thing anymore. They're not as collectible, and you'll see a lot of people really aren't that interested. Here's the interesting thing about war comics, and I'll show you. So bo books like this um, are still pretty affordable. You wouldn't think there's a lot of collectors um, until you start getting high grade. High grade, people will fight to... Blood sport books like this. So, <laughs> and as you get into the keys, um, the gray tone covers, you know, uh, the certain artists, uh, there are some books that are just as hot as any book. They're, I mean, they're hot. They're just not there. You'll right. never find one for sale. <laughs> People will crawl over broken glass to bid on them. <laughs> and they're serious because they never see them. So imagine if the book you want, you haven't seen one in six years. <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's up for auction. Yeah. And you know you're not the only person that hasn't seen it. You literally start stressing out. Like, how can I mortgage the house? <laughs> so the census on this one um, is kind of similar to what you were talking about. There's yeah. only 19 in the census. Nine of them are nine eights. Our GPA, our estimated cost that we thought someone would pay is about $100. And we sold it for $143. Yeah. I mean... And that's about right. If I wanted to sell my horror stuff, I would do fine. Yeah. I'm not selling that. No. So, yeah. Well, and I know you sold this one because it's not your favorite cover. Or else you wouldn't have sold it. Because I know you wouldn't have sold it if it was one of your favorite covers. It's not. But here's the problem. It's just one small rub. That Kaluta cover is very cool. Yeah. And, and people are starting to get turned on to the fact that some of the best art was really coming out of D.C. in these non-hero comics um, in the 70s. So this is an 80s book. Mm -hmm. um, that's why once uh, it got into I, Vampire and some different things in House of Mystery, I stopped. Yeah, really. they're not really your Neil Adams. Team. Neil Adams did some covers um, when they had a dollar cover price on them uh, that were pretty cool, but I didn't think they, they were as nice as the stuff he did seven, eight years earlier. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there, there are books, no different than this war book. I can show you horror books, all kinds of books that are more obscure that people will pay a premium. And those are the kinds of books I collect, mm -hmm. but I collect the goofiest stuff. I mean, I, I like Super Friends. I would collect that entire series. I had an entire set of Super Friends in 9-8. As a matter of fact, I got a Gem Mint 10 on one of them. <laughs> and you sold it? Uh, not, not pressed, anything. That Those are the types of books I was buying. In the 80s. Um, I sold it for like $100, $120 at that time, which was an astronomical amount. I wonder how much it would go for today. Because that book in 9-8, would, I could have probably sold it for $30 or $40. And this is uh, 2000 or 2001 when CGC just opened. Mm -hmm. And I had all these incredibly high-grade books. I still have some of them. Um, but I, I would like to put that set together again. Super Friends and Spidey Super Stories. And I don't care who else likes them. <laughs> But I don't really <laughs> <laughs> leave your comments about how much those are silly comic books. Um, but I want them in nine six. I mean, you got some cool ones up here nine. that they're like, "Are you sure? <laughs> are you sure that's what you want to collect?" <laughs> you got this house of secrets up here. Well, no, that this is this the goofiest combination. Spider Man number one. No, look, I've got this Harley Quinn number one. <laughs> that's cool though. It's the only it is modern cool. Book it's up modern. Here. I love the art. I think the art's fantastic. But then you got Infinity Ink with the, guy, the skeleton smoking cigarette. Come on. Yeah, but in, in the real world, people are like, why isn't that a 9 8? Because I didn't have a 9 8. And I, I bought this 9 6. <laughs> I didn't even look to see if I can upgrade it because I don't care. I'm just keeping it. 
stuff like this. I mean, I mean, you do have this here too. These aren't cheap. I mean, these. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Well, you know, there's other covers, but here's here's what I like about Betty and Veronica, Archie's Girls, when they're when they're in grade. It's it's her the art. I mean, the big eyed Betty and Veronica. Box. It's a Betty Veronica. You know, I like box. I like these big eyed almost they're they're almost good girl covers, and some of them are. And I actually chased after a bunch of mid grade, uh, mid grade Archie, good girl covers, and you'd be surprised how much people were paying for them. Not that they're people don't know that those are popular, but they were like five, five and six. Oh, I was willing to buy them because they're, they're scarce. Mm -hmm. And some of those covers are just hilarious. This is one of my favorite covers. I, I see, I don't, I don't, I'm not looking. I love but this right next to the Spidey super friends books that you buy. That's interesting. Eclectic collection. Same era. <laughs> I think we're done. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this episode we have an instagram um check it out if you feel so inclined we also do claim sales live every monday live claim sales every monday five to seven o'clock on instagram yes yeah link down below if you want to come say hi i'm very competitive there <laughs> yes um also check out our ebay store we always are listing new items and we give discounts over yeah. there too all right thanks until cool. next time bye, bye.